you see a lot of fair value gaps and you ask which one to take in this video i'll show you one simple step that is going to filter out all of the fair value gaps that don't work and only leave the fair value gap that work it's a very simple and easy step that can be done in less than a minute yet a lot of people overlook it let's get into the charts now taking a look at this price action again you have a lot of fair value gaps this is a 15 minute chart and you always have this question oh which one do i use a bearish fair value gap here getting disrespected the bullish one is giving a small move and then price coming lower i actually come into this fair value gap how do we trade only the fair value gaps that are high probability with only one step simply what are we going to be doing now let me show you this we are on the 15 minutes how many fair value gaps we see i mean if we started from let's say this day right we can see fair value gap here another one here there is one that was disrespected here another one here and then a lot of other ones all the way below there is a bullish one a bullish one get disrespected you get overwhelmed by the number of fair value gaps that you're seeing and you're asking yourself this question is there a trick or something that i can do to filter out the bad fair value gaps and yes there is a very easy step that we can actually apply here and only focus on the high probability fair value gaps those fair value gaps are going to be the one that are going to be followed by expansions they're the one that are going to give us those displacement moves so we're not going to be trading those small fair value gaps which is for example this one it's not going to be a fair value gap that give us a pullback or retracement it's going to be always an expansion so now what is this simply before that i want to show you if we apply the fair value gap indicator here we can see how many fair value gaps we have so taking a look at this price action for example from here to here this is the number of fair value gaps that we're having a lot of fair value gaps and you'll definitely get overwhelmed now disabling the indicator i don't want you to use no indicators even for fair value gaps because again it's going to make you confused by enabling and showing all of the fair value gaps available we know that not every fair value gap is a high probability we're going to focus only on the high probability ones now some people would say oh we look for fair value gaps that broke structure and that's partially correct but there is something that is more into it in this price action i would simply do one simple thing we are on the 15 minutes the only thing that i will do is go to a higher time frame a higher time frame is relative so for any time frame that you're looking for entries and fair value gaps i would simply switch to a higher one so for example in this case we have 15 minutes i'm not gonna go really to daily and weekly and monthly no i'm gonna stick relatively higher to the 15 minutes let's do one hour or four hours let's start with the one hour and see what is going on and i'll show you how one minute switching to another time frame can actually it's going to save you from falling into a lot of the bad fair value gaps and it's going to only make you trade the high probability ones and the ones that are followed by displacement and expansion now this is the hourly chart of the same price action that we're seeing now relatively again this time frame is a higher time frame relative to the 15 minutes now take a look at this look at the number of fair value gaps that we're having much less fair value gap so for example marking this fair value gap here this is one fair value gap that's the extreme and i'm gonna also give you a hint on which fair value gaps to mark and this is something that i've talked about before we have another one here that is also an extreme one we also have one here that's an extreme those are the one hour fair value gaps right so we have much less number of fair value gaps uh, compared to the 15 minutes on the 15 minutes we had a lot of fair value gaps here because we're trading the 15 minutes we don't want to stay on the one hour right so on the one hour those are the fair value gaps that we're seeing and what do you notice actually that's where price get respected you see this fair value gap respected here this fair value gap we had a nice move to the upside also here from this hourly fair value gap we had a respect from this hourly fair value gap we had respect now what we are going to do is go back to 15 minutes now take a look at what's this one minute have done to us okay so it's only one minute of extra work going to the one hour time frame and look at the difference here so we had this fair value gap now since this fair value gap is now part of a higher time frame fair value gap then that's not a high probability one you see now because this fair value gap was very close to the one hour fair value gap so if it's not inside of it but really close to it we can also uh, actually count on this but there is another fair value gap that is where inside of this which is this fair value gap 
this is also a high probability one and you see that's where price actually reacted for the first time going all the way there now again the same logic going where to this fair value gap you see we had a lot of fair value gaps even bullish fair value gaps here on the 15 minutes another bullish fair value gap above it somewhere in here we have some bullish fair value gap inside here all those fair value gaps are low probability why because they're not part of another higher time frame fair value gap but this one you see actually taking a look at this this was a, an hourly fair value gap now you ask yourself this question oh do we actually have another 50 minute fair value gap inside of it and yes now we're basically taking the high probability 50 minute fair value gaps as well as refining those fair value gaps so you see that's our 15 minute fair value gap inside of the hourly fair value gap that's your high probability one you see price respected that win lower now the same question you see we had a lot of different bullish fair value gap here bearish one those ones you could actually trade from after price trading into your main fair value gap because now what is going to do it's going to confirm your bias price going lower right and then break a structure here you have this fair value gap so you could have traded this one but mainly this is your main fair value gap which is part of the one hour fair value gap that's where the expansion is going to happen now take a look at this again on the 15 minutes how many fair value gaps we have now we see we have this fair value gap that was the extreme one price rebalanced the fair value gap immediately so it was not a, an hourly fair value gap but take a look at this this is our one hour fair value gap however on the 15 minutes we have one fair value gap two fair value gap three four and then keep counting right five six a lot of fair value gaps a lot of people get confused about oh which one do i go with and some people entered from this fair value gap as you can see there was some selling pressure here but it did not last and then price started going higher where is the right or the real fair value gap to trade from in this price action leg it's the hourly fair value gap that price came back to and you see as price come into this fair value gap now what you could do is this where's the 15 minute fair value gap inside of it we actually have this one as well as this one also there is a small one and another small one however why this one because we could actually see the overlapping of this inside of it or also the overlapping of this low very close to it so you see that was the hourly fair value gap we have the overlapping inside of it we could actually count on this now price started going lower applying the same logic on any chart which is basically going to a higher time frame and it's all relative so even if you are trading with one minute you could do this with the 15 minute uh, trading with four hour you could do this with the daily and the weekly and then it keeps going on and on so you could apply the same market makers model um, time alignments with this and it's still gonna work but make sure that you go two time frames higher than the one that you're using so if i'm looking at the one minute i would go check the five minutes 15 minutes and maybe the hourly those are the time frames i'll be checking if there is a fair value gap inside now what is the advantage of this why is this gonna give you high probability setups and high probability fair value gaps the first reason is basically we're trading off a higher time frame pda rate where a lot of people would tell you oh actually because you're trading in a 15 minutes you gotta look at the higher time frame pda rates but by doing this you're basically already checking at those uh, pda rates already now another advantage of this is that even if you were against the bias the trade could still work so the bias become less important in this case why because it's part of the bias that you're looking for your high time frame pd arrays it's it's already part of the bias and then another thing is you only participate in the big moves or the expansion moves you really don't participate in those small moves where there is a pullback and the price go lower so you're not participating in this you're actually participating on the big move here so now this small move it's actually this big move because we're looking at the higher time frame now in the first example we went from 15 minutes to one hour now we could do the opposite here and i think it's going to be much simpler in this case now let's say you want to trade with a four hour fair value gap right so let's say you want to look for a four hour fair value gap trade from the fair value gap and then look for a confirmation on 15 minutes for example so your fair value gap is going to be on your high probability one actually is going to be drawn or identified on the four hour time frame what we're going to be doing is going to the daily time frame first so the first step is go with the daily time frame and that's what we're going to be doing so simply starting from any point near the price action but in this case 
I'm going to go from here just to show you how we can actually approach this. Now, one thing here, make sure that you look at the overlapping of fair valley gaps with any other PD array. So you see here, you have this high overlapping with the fair valley gap. And those highs are what? Breaker block or mitigation block on the lower time frame. So they're still significant when it comes to price action. And those are levels that I called um, months ago in the Discord before they happen. And you see here, really a sniper entry from this level. So let's forget about this for now, but make sure to look at those overlapping sometimes because they're really significant. Now we have this fair value gap here on the uh, daily time frame. We have also one here, daily time frame. Again, as we're going up, there is no fair value gap. So there's this bearish one as well as this bullish one, but price, you know, did not come back to it um in a while so let's say we take this fair value gap here that's a clear one after liquidity sweep also look at those so a fair value gap should have a liquidity sweep in order to be validated or another mitigation of a fair value gap but let's focus on some fair value gaps that are clear in order to learn a lesson from them so you see fair value gap here another one here bearish one no fair value gaps here there is the small one here and simply doesn't look like it was respected so this is a fair value gap here no fair value gap here as we go in higher there was this one that clearly had to be inversed after this liquidity level taken we have this fair value gap here and we also have this one as well as the last one that we're having is right here so this is the current price action in euro dollar now those are your daily fair value gaps you could have drawn more but i don't want to draw all of the fair value gaps that are unnecessary i want to make it clear and uh, short so this is your daily fair value gap now you're going to go to four hour which is a time frame that you want to trade off the fair value gaps and this is where you're going to look for fair value gaps on the four hour that are high probability they're going to be inside of those daily fair value gaps okay so simply you're going to be trading off a higher time frame pd array taking a look at this what do we see here simply you ask yourself this question or oh, do we have and always look at the extreme one with the overlapping so on the four hour what do we see this is your daily fair value gap on the four hour we actually have this fair value gap here and we have this main one we could adjust this to the four hour fair value gap now because we know that we are actually trading off a daily fair value gap and you ask yourself this question if it's a big fair value gap do we have an overlapping here if the answer is yes, mark the overlapping. In this case, it's this from the body or the high. That's your overlapping. That's where price came to start going higher. So that's your high probability fair value gap now. What's the reason? The first one is that it's in a daily fair value gap, which is a higher time frame to the four hour. The other reason is that it has this overlapping high, which is again a mitigation or breaker block on the lower time frame inside of the main fair value gap. That's where price respected this going higher now again the same question here what do we have here we have this big fair value gap actually one two two fair value gaps inside of the daily fair value gap actually the main one is this one below because the first reason is that it's the extreme the second one you're going to see it now so this is your main fair value gap what is the second reason is that we have some overlapping the first one is here and then the second one is here those are highs Again, breaker blocks or mitigations blocks inside of the daily and the four hour fair value gap in this case. We will find this to the four hour, which is now the extreme fair value gap. And you see, where did price react from? The first time is sniper entry here, going higher. And then where? Sniper entry again, going higher. That's a fair value gap that we could have been trading from. Now take a look at this. This was also a daily fair value gap. You see, this was a week so it was not part of a fair value gap there is no fair value gap here there is only one here and there is this one that was just way below even before the fair value gap is created so the main fair value gap is this one actually so i could have adjusted this just like this and that's our high probability fair value gap simply it was not respected here exactly we broke above it and we came lower if we had a confirmation, it's going to be a losing trade. If there is no confirmation, then it's not going to be a trade. Now, again, the same thing to this daily fair value gap. We ask ourselves this question. Do we have a four-hour fair value gap here? We have this small fair value gap all the way here. 
but this one is more significant even though this is the extreme fair value gap but that's not where the real displacement happened it's this one so we're gonna adjust this to our four hour fair value gap and then ask yourself this question do we have an overlapping here there is one but it's not that obvious which is this pullback this low inside of the fair value gap because we broke through it and again where did price react from again those levels here exactly at the low overlapping and the low overlapping again inside of the where four hour fair value gap inside of the daily we take a look at this again that's our daily fair value gap now take a look at this we have one fair value gap here no fair value gap here one here again you ask yourself this question now this had a displacement so it's not the first example where the first candle or the first fair value gap had no displacement this one actually had a displacement so we could have went with both so the first one would be right here and then the second one would be the second one but mainly i focus more on the extreme so i'd be ignoring everything in here and i'd be looking for this one with overlappings where do we have the overlapping one is here and a second one is here those are the overlapping and that's where price actually reacted of the fair value gap that's a whole process of actually identifying the high probability fair value gaps especially the overlapping and the higher time frame confluence so you see this was our fair value gap on the four hour part of the daily fair value gap we keep going this is a daily fair value gap but on the four hour where do we see it we can see that this was the fair value gap on the four hour now this one was not the extreme fair value gap so if we had already a liquidity sweep here at the end of the range then that's not going to be valid it's simply an inverse fair value gap but still for the sake of the video i'm gonna i'm gonna go over all of those fair value gaps now again this is a daily fair value gap the same question is do we have a four hour fair value gap inside of it yes so adjusting this just like this that's your four hour fair value gap where do we have the overlapping we have one here and that's where the first reaction happened going all the way lower and then price started going higher do we have another overlapping inside of the fair value gap yes that's the one so two times price came back to the fair value gap and both of the times we had a very nice displacement to the lower side again another fair value gap here on the daily we adjusted it to the four hour and that's our four hour fair value gap price started going inside of the fair value gap started going lower another one here and that's a daily fair value gap now here's the question this is a daily fair value gap do we have a four hour inside of it yes we actually have this one however this is already fully rebalanced so there is no reason to trade this we're not going to be trading this we're not going to be trading this daily fair value gap and you see what happened here Price just broke through it it's like nothing so that's how we actually approach fair value gaps the high probability ones and we look at the overlapping inside of those if you just follow this you're going to be less confused less overwhelmed from the big number of fair value gaps that, that you see in your chart it's going to actually filter out and refine a lot of the bad fair value gaps this is it for the video hopefully you guys learned something new hopefully you use this method in order to filter out the bad fair value gaps and only focus on the high probability ones if there is a topic that you want me to talk about write it in the comments this is molhem and i'll see you next video